Now see the difference in the way the one that we scrub looks. It's tender as well because we've taken that fiber, that immediate fiber off the top of it. Now when you shock your asparagus, one thing to remember, don't leave it sitting in the water for too long. You're just trying to chill it so that you can handle it, okay? Big pot blanching, um, one of my favorite things to talk about. I just like the way it sounds, big pot blanching. Um, and that requires us to have a, a big pot, right? That's what we need, the big pot of, of boiling water uh, to be able to blanch our green vegetables. We're talking about green vegetables here. And we talk about um, three things that are gonna be accomplished through big pot blanching. Um, number one, uh, we're going to bring that beautiful green pigment to the surface. So we have bright vegetables and we always Love to be able to serve our vegetables um, that they look most vibrant. Um, and the second part uh, is to be able to help season the vegetables. So we're going to add uh, an abundance of salt uh, to our water um, so that it helps season the vegetable. At the same time, it helps cook the vegetable because, as you know, salt uh, uh, helps to uh, penetrate um, the, the meat of the vegetable and, and therefore helping cooking it. Um, we all have our individual preferences, I'm sure you do. Um, when you taste a green bean or an asparagus or a fava bean or uh, a, 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 a yellow wax bean or anything that you are tasting, um, you have a, a, a preference for how that feels uh, and the resistance of it. So if, if I took my knife right now, and this is a, a, a raw piece of asparagus, and put it in there, it's, there's a lot of resistance to that, okay? So how much resistance do we want to eliminate through the cooking process to get it to the tooth that we like? And, and that's, that's something that's personal. For me, um, I like my, my green vegetables to have just a little bit of resistance. Uh, Nouvelle Cuisine in the 70s uh, was much maligned because all of their blanching of green vegetables resulted in something that was really crispy and crunchy. Um, I, I did, that wasn't really a big fan of that. So um, you have to find uh, that sense of resistance that pleases you the most, okay? So that'll take some time, some practicing. Maybe you take it out after two minutes uh, and you test it. Maybe you take it out after three minutes in order to get to that, that tooth that you like. Um, so we're gonna do some asparagus today. And there's a couple techniques for, uh, for peeling the asparagus. And uh, you may say, well, why do you wanna peel it? Why don't you just cook it? Well, we wanna have a sense of refinement here, where we can peel the asparagus, remove some of that skin, some of that fiber that's in the skin, again, helping to do a couple things, uh, helping us with the, with the resistance of it and the pleasure of that resistance or, not, or lack of resistance, um, and the color of it, um, helping to bring up, up that color of it. Um, so those are some of the things that we think about when we're, we're gonna peel um, our, our vegetables. So um, this, is, um, this is a peeler that my, my mother had. So when I was a young lad in, in the kitchen, um, this was the kind of peeler we had. And we would peel potatoes like this, and many of you may remember that. This peeler you can just um, throw away. Okay, that's, that's not the, the peeler that I would recommend for anybody to be using. So then we have two, two peelers here. One is called an economois, which is, means economy, which means that peeling vegetables with a peeler economized uh, the amount of vegetable that was being, but being removed. So if you think about a potato, if you didn't have a peeler, you'd use a knife. And of course, you'd have to have extraordinary knife skills in order to remove just the exterior of that potato. Well, the peelers were, were developed uh, to bring more economy uh, to, to, our, to our ingredients and therefore have more to eat. So an economy in, in, in French. Uh, and this is a, a Swiss peeler. Both of them are really, really good um, for, for peeling. And I'll show you the technique that I would use for peeling asparagus. So first we wanna eliminate some of the leaves at the point where we are going to peel to. Okay, so taking my, my little paring knife here and just going down and removing those leaves. Uh, that'll help um, create a smooth surface to be able to use your peelers, okay? So boom, boom, boom. Now we're gonna use two methods for peeling our vegetables. You can see here we have two different results from different types of peeling. One using a peeler 
and one using a green scrubby. Okay. When we talk about our green vegetables and we talk about that, that pigmentation coming to the surface, we all know that there's, there's a layer of gas between that pigment and the, and the skin, and we want to remove that. Um, we want to eliminate that gas, and the gas will dissipate almost, quick, almost instantaneously when you drop it in water. And then it's a matter of main, maintaining the, the boiling water. Okay, so you don't want your water to stop boiling when you put vegetables in it, which means that we don't want to take 10 bunches of asparagus and drop them in the water. Right? That's, it's going to take much too long for that water to come back up to temperature. The gases that have been released immediately are now going to be impacted by the acids from the vegetables that, as they're cooking, the acids become prevalent and they'll diminish or dull that greenness. So we want to make sure that we're cooking the appropriate amount of vegetables in our big pot so that the water does not cease boiling. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Okay, so. When I peel my asparagus, I always put a piece of parchment paper down, and you're probably wondering what this apple is for, and I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. I always put a piece of parchment paper down because I want to be um, as clean as possible and as efficient as possible. So I've got a loaf pan here, and you're probably saying, what's that loaf pan for? Well, the loaf pan allows me to have freedom between the surface of my work so table and the asparagus. So I can hold my asparagus here, whereas if I, if I didn't have that, I'd have to be peeling down here, and I'm putting pressure on the stem, which may result in me breaking my asparagus spear. We don't want to do that. So, just like this, we get a beautiful peeled asparagus. Very simple with our, with, our, with our Swiss peeler. Works very well. And you can see how little skin that takes off. Now, once I peel it, I'm gonna snap it. And it's gonna snap at the, at the point where the, where the, the, the toughness and, and, and tender meet. So, at that point, you know this part is too tough really to eat. So that snapping is very important. The, I'll use this, I'll use my peeler, the kind of other French peeler. And, I, and it's a little more, to me, it's a little more effective than the, the Swiss peeler. But again, I can go with both of them. And then the other method is using our green scrubby. And that you don't need anything and you just rub it through Just remove a little bit of that fiber. Of course, you want to use a green scrubby that's new, not one that you've been scrubbing pots with for the past week. And you see, it results in a very smooth, almost velvet-like, and there's where it snaps as well, okay? And then we're gonna bundle our asparagus. And we don't bundle all of our vegetables, we actually only bundle a few, and asparagus is probably the main one. And why do we bundle the asparagus? Well, the bundle of the asparagus because the tips uh, are very fragile when they start to cook. And we don't want them bumping against each other. We don't want them in this violent environment kind of, kind of uh, 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 bumping against each other and then, and then uh, diminishing uh, the quality of the leaves at the tips. Because that's very important uh, in asparagus is making sure that we have that beautiful, uh, that beautiful head, that, that cluster that's very tight. So bundling prevents them from banging into one another. Okay, so then I'm done with that. Uh, I've done that, I can eliminate all this now, okay? But first, I wanna show you why I have the apple. And it'll, it'll, it'll give you a different use and why I prefer the Economoi over the Swiss peeler. So in an apple, when I peel an apple or any fruit, we start like that, top and bottom. See, to me, it's much easier. My hands are much closer to the, to, the, to the fruit, where this one, I'd have to do this. And yes, it works as well, but I'm not as confident with the peeler because it's so far away from, from where I can control. And controlling anything uh, that you're working with in your tools is really, really important. Boom, boom. Okay, we peeled our apple. We'll cut it in half, and hopefully it'll become evident why it's this is why I love this peeler. Because I can core my apple at the same time I've peeled it, and I don't have to use anything else. This, I cannot do that way. Now, there's a very wonderful dessert called a tart tatin, which is 
very famous in French. It's used apples that are half like this. And I used to make it every day. And so to be able to use this uh, tool was much more uh, advantageous than using the Swiss peeler. Okay, so now what I can do, besides eat my, eat my apple, is now I can just eliminate all my trim, okay? So trim, we call it trim. Uh, some people call it scraps, but remember, they're not scraps. Scraps are related to iron, steel, um, things that like that nature. Food is always trim. Okay, so we have that, we're ready to go. So bundling, okay, so we're gonna take our, in this case, we have seven asparagus spears. And there may, you know, the, the size of the asparagus will define how many spears go in here. If it was really, truly jumbo asparagus, we may only bundle four or maybe three. Bundling asparagus, string. Okay, we've got our tips, which is most important to have aligned. We're gonna take our string, wrap it twice around the tips and try to get it nice and close, okay? And it's, it's secured there. And I'm gonna take it down and around the base, okay? And then back up. Cut it. And for those of you who are Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, you may remember how to do a slip knot. But a slip knot is very, very easy. You take the string under, and you take it under again the same way. So that you create a loop. And that loop there, see that, those two loops right there? Allow it to be a slip knot so that you can tighten it, right? And then to cinch it so that it doesn't get loose, you just tie another knot. And there's your slip knot. And then we'll just trim the end. There we have our bundle of asparagus. In fact, I'm gonna drop them in the water as we speak. So, up. Oh, but before that, most important is the salt. Salt, 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 salt. Wow, he's using a lot of salt. Yes, I'm using a lot of salt. We wanna have that taste like seawater, okay? Let that get back to, this, back to a boil. Our water's boiling again. Pop our asparagus in. Pop our asparagus in. Go ahead and trim this. You can see immediately that pigment starting to come to the surface. Now we're gonna have we're gonna shock our asparagus after it's cooked. Now shocking does a, a couple things. Of course, it allows us to then to handle the asparagus. Um, immediately, we're not we're not burning ourselves. It also kind of ceases the cooking process a little bit, okay? Because we're cooking it at 212 degrees here, we want to stop that cooking process immediately. So just shocking it. Or if you want to serve it right away, then you just you're just going to take it right from the right from the boiling water. You're going to take off the um, the string and put it on a platter, uh, put it on a plate. Um, it's a wonderful vegetable. Um, one of the most considered one of the most luxurious vegetables. Um, one of the great ways of serving it uh, has always been with hollandaise sauce, um, which is a very classic um, French sauce, which we'll learn about a little later in our, in, in, in our classes. Um, but in, but it's, it's also something that served cold um, is wonderful with a simple vinaigrette, uh, olive oil, salt even. But also when you, when you chill it, you can have it in your mise en place. When we talk about mise en place, everything ready uh, to, to use when you need it throughout the process of your cooking. So if we were gonna grill our asparagus, for example, we'd wanna be able to blanch it ahead of time, chill it down and have it prepared so that it's ready to throw on the grill and we just grill it for two minutes, it'd be ready to go. So being prepared uh, by having your ingredients um, already to, a to, to, to the point where you just are doing one thing to it, grilling it, dressing it, um, would, be, would be something that is really, really important. Okay. You can see you can see how bright that is. I'm just going to bring it down here, and we've tested the resistance again with the tip of our knife. It's almost there. Do it an, another minute, and it should be perfectly seasoned as well. Okay, because the salt that's in the water is now penetrating the flesh of the asparagus and helping season it. Okay, look at that. See how bright, vibrant that is, how beautiful it is. We'll go ahead and shock this one. This is our asparagus that has been scrubbed.
It's hot. Remove our string.
Now see the difference in the way the one that we scrub looks. It's tender as well because we've taken that fiber, that immediate fiber off the top of it. Now when you shock your asparagus, one thing to remember, don't leave it sitting in the water for too long. You're just trying to chill it so that you can handle it, okay? This one is as pretty and as tender. And there we go. Big pop blanching.